Right, so Keir Starmer, a man with all the likability of rush hour traffic combined with the charisma of a plain rye vita and all the political astuteness of a brick combined with all the depth of a shot glass. I really cannot stand the guy because he has been so insufferably dishonest for so long over so many things throughout his political career. He's only been an MP since 2015. But this weekend, the man we all prefer to call Keith, he doesn't deserve to share a name with the founder of the Labour movement, utterly surpassed himself as three of his biggest whoppers have all come unraveled all in one day, all on the same show. Well, tell us then, Damo, how much egg has Mr. Brill Cream got on his face then? Well, let's start with second jobbing. We're all familiar with MPs doing it. A great many MPs have second jobs. The Sky News had done an expose on the ones raking it in the most. And as you would have probably expected, most of the top 20, 17 of them, in fact, were Tories. But both David Lammy and Jess Phillips of Labour both made the top 22nd job earners too. Now, it should be noted that all of this money has to be declared and you can simply go to the Electoral Commission website and type in your MP's name and see what they might be getting in the way of second incomes or private donations. It is all a matter of public record, or at least should be. Now, Starmer has positioned himself as somebody who thinks second jobs should be banned, but there should be some exceptions. You see, that just leaves a bit of wiggle room to get away with it in my eyes. But then I thought, well, hang on a moment. There's a few doctors who are MPs, as a, for instance. I think I'm right that there is a few of them, though only Rosina Allen can is springing to mind off the top of my head, uh, who actually do shifts in their local hospitals. I think they are admirable for doing that. They are also required to do some work to keep their skills up and remain registered as medical professionals. But she wasn't the exception Starmer was thinking of. Instead... He decided to defend David Lammy, the highest second job earner in the Labour Parliamentary Party, making more than £200,000 on the side by writing books and doing media work, which Keith sees as being all part of the political process, you see. The thing is, Lammy does the speech circuit too. Lucrative stuff, and that places him in a position where he can be influenced by those he's addressing. You've seen Theresa May and Boris Johnson doing the same thing and making a lot of money, haven't we? I don't think Lammy had on his election materials that a vote for me is a vote for my show on LBC or a vote for me is a vote for my getting paid to talk to bankers. And I doubt he'll be selling those points at the next election either on his election literature. The thing is, Starmer himself is a hypocrite on this. Back when Corbyn was still leader and Starmer was shadow Brexit minister, Starmer wanted to do some consultancy work as a second job for law firm Mishkonda Rea, a position he petitioned Corbyn to be allowed to take up, and which Corbyn barred him from doing so, legitimately opposed to second jobs as he was. But prior to taking up a shadow cabinet post, Starmer had been second jobbing as a lawyer still too, ever since he'd actually become an MP. This is not a guy like all who have come before him who will see the rules on second jobs changed if he ever becomes PM. He also fell afoul over Brexit. Sky's Sophie Ridge was on a roll with him. It was her show that he was on, you see. She brought up Starmer's New Year's speech, which I covered in another video the other day, where Starmer said he had gone around the country campaigning for Remain, but he couldn't disagree with the basic case so many Leave voters had made to him. Now, as Ridge put it to him, he had said at the time that the vote to leave was catastrophic. So catastrophic, in fact, that despite leading the campaign for Remain for Labour, he declared he would campaign for a second referendum back then as well. He had just last week said he actually agreed with much of what leave voters were telling him at the time. What a man of conviction in that case. That's almost like writing a speech coming up for both leave and Remain like Boris Johnson did, didn't it? Starmer's call for a second referendum is what destroyed Labour in the 2019 general election. It was the death knell of Corbyn's time as leader, and it ushered in Keith under a fistful of pledges and promises, all of which he has broken, not least of which the entire second referendum he said he was committed to. His Leave-centric comments in his New Year's speech were a lull to Leavers that actually he was OK, a message to Red Wall seats that voted Leave that he won't reverse Brexit if they come back to Labour. But honestly, can you really believe anything he says on this subject, or any other subject to be, for that matter, whether you voted leave or remain, when he's so dishonest? He floundered, it was 2-0 to Ridge. Thirdly, he was also asked on the Ridge show about NHS outsourcing and his U-turn over ending it in the NHS. Well, he did accept private health donations, didn't he, along with his shadow health spiv was streeting. But of course, this was something else he had promised to do if elected Labour leader in 2020. Starmer says now that he wants to use private health provision more effectively. But wherever you use it, it will be more expensive. Unless you, I don't know, take a position of saying to the private sector, right, 
We're in the middle of a national health crisis. We need you to do your part. We need your resources. We need your capacity. But we're only going to pay you the same as the NHS already gets. You need to do your part. Don't ask them for their resources. Tell them that we're going to use them because we have to right now. I don't think that's what these private health donations were paying for, though, was it? Hitting the donor shareholders it's right in the dividends. That won't wash. Renationalise the private sector, if only temporarily. That would at least be sort of bold. It'll never happen, though. We'll end up paying them those higher rates, their going rates, and it'll be costs passed on to us in the long term so that Labour gets its donations and Starmer and Streeting continue to get theirs, along with anybody else in that party taking private health donations right now. It's morally repugnant. It makes no economic sense. And it's utterly self-serving, a Tory thing to do. And we'd be better off renationalising the privatised portions of the actual NHS and attracting back staff we've lost, both home and abroad, with decent pay, conditions and incentives. Three times in one programme, Starmer was exposed as the amoral, toothless, clueless liar many of us have always known him to be. An election win for him will be absolutely no win for the rest of us.